Dr. Rake, thank you for joining us. I know you're remote, so thank you for being here today. And it's okay with Dr. Schaefer, Mr. Kern, Ms. Brown, I'll get started. So the first thing we have on the agenda is the draft athletic site. This committee charged me with responsibility of going through and creating a, a new athletic website based upon your desires for flexibility, information, as well as up-to-date um, events and things coming down the line. I promise you something by the end of the month. I'm glad to say that we'll go live here on Wednesday around 10 a.m. Um, the only thing that's missing is the rosters. We don't have rosters completed, so I just removed that from the website. That wasn't one because um, Dan, Greg, or Scott, or anyone else was lazy. Well, we don't do football rosters. We didn't do tryouts, et cetera, et cetera. So they couldn't just um, release them blank, so I asked them to remove for rosters until that time. Uh, Randy, uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to join the meeting here real quick, and then I can walk us through on how to access the website. And as we're um, getting that set up, Ms. Blank, I see you joined us, so thank you for uh, joining us this evening. I hope you're feeling better. Oh, I am. I am. I love the meal for drugs now. I really do. Wonderful. So if you're a if you're a did Tammy unmute or mute? Yeah, I think so. I think we're good now. Yeah, uh, I unmuted. I'm sorry. That's okay. I am going to share with you what we've done so far to get your feedback. So um, the main landing page is in front of you. I'm, I'm sorry it's not as big as we'd all like. Uh, what I will do is, add, is try to blow that up a little bit bigger for you. Just give me one quick second. I clicked on the link and I get a login page. Yeah, I because I, so that... it's not live yet. Yeah, that's that's done intentionally on their end, which I apologize so for. I can't get in to see it. No, no, it's going to go live on Wednesday. So what you see in front of you is the athletic website. Um, the, the couple of main things that just pay some attention to. By clicking on the, the eye with the feather on top left hand corner, that will bring you back to the home screen at all times. This is our big story rotating bar. We could put up to six or seven stories here. And as they come in, you can just simply scroll through them by clicking on it. We'll actually take you to the story. I'll walk you through the navigation bars. Uh, but what you'll see here is we have our different teams. And I'll go through each one of these, some different athletic information like forms, documents, policies, and procedures. Some forms here. This takes us to a sideline store, our ticket information, and then the, the actual school website. So let me walk you through just a couple of those as the site came out pretty well, I think, in my opinion. Uh, and again, we'll go live on Wednesday. So scrolling down here under Teams. You can see that we listed all the teams here. Again, the rosters won't be populated at this time. Neither will the coaches that are still building on this. But each school team will have its own individual portion of the website or page, if you want to call it. The one thing that we should talk, probably talk about in policy and personnel is what's neat here. You don't see it because I didn't do it yet. You can hyperlink every sports Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter to this site which we really only have that ISD Athletics Twitter, and we have, I think, Girls Soccer and Girls Basketball Twitter. Some of the other groups have parent booster pages, Facebook pages. We should probably talk to your committee if we feel comfortable posting that or not, because really right now they're school affiliated, but they're not school managed and monitored. So if someone would post something inappropriate, you know, I can't control that. So we have to talk through that, but you'll see all that there. And that, that'll be very nice because our parents who run these uh, different groups or these our coaches who run these different pages do populate a great deal of information. So what you see here is the little bird for Twitter, the F for Facebook, and then the Instagram logo. So it's something that's accessible that is also by um, each season. So that is up and running. We have a story linked to each one of them. But as the sites become more populated, you'll be able to have a nice, robust site filled with information that people can access. So that's one takeaway that I really thought was nice from the website. Under athletic information, what we will have is a directory there for people to see um, requirements for, uh, regarding athletic eligibility, how parents and coaches communicate, that, that forms on there. I did that intentionally to be um, open and upfront with everyone about how we're going to respond. Because the worst thing that I think you could do after a hard fought loss is go talk to a parent about playing time. So we kind of want to make sure we have common expectations, how we work together. 
Then I included fitness center hours because that's something that always comes up about when the fitness center is available. And here, these are leagues that we're a part of. I included the PLA, Whitfield, and PIHL for uh, obvious reasons. Then I included, I called um, the rugby coach. I guess there's a rugby league, so we called them and asked which league we're a part of. So that's on there too, because they just want a state championship, but we want to make sure people know about the conferences or and or leagues that we're a part of. Max preps is included. It doesn't seem like it's used by a lot of people, but some still are using it. So I included it there. And really, what that is, and Dan, I'll defer to you. But really, what I think it is is Max preps is a way to help um, promote, recruit, and keep community members aware of individual athletes as well as the team sports. It's not really populated much, but I kept it on there in case people want to do that. Uh, Dan, anything you, did I just speak about from Max Preps that you want to clarify? Um, Max Preps essentially is just a statistician uh, website um, that keeps the records, the stats, um, the rosters, very similar to this. Um, I think if we build a good enough website, we don't even need to have Max Preps on there unless coaches prefer that as well. And there, there is a statistics feature on this, we're just not there yet. There's no statistics to, to provide any. Uh, third call, NCAA eligibility, recruiting center, and then Title IX documentation and surveys. And then here I just included some regular high school links, um, Post-Gazette, Tribune Review, and or Indiana Gazette sports feature. So something that people can go to rather quickly and efficiently. Once you get statistics available, will our new website support that, or yep. do we still have to use Max Press? Right? Nope. Nope. So we'll yeah. be able to just yep. Okay. Yep. the hard thing we're going to face and we have to talk about is how do we take all the history and years of all of our sports and populating this website we got to figure that out too um we're not there yet i just kind of want to get started for next year but down the road this should be like almost like a encyclopedia of all all things athletics i just i can't tell you what records we do or do not have i don't know but um that will no longer be my responsibility until i um, I'll, I just, my job was to get the site up and running. Um, no, under, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Blank. Go ahead. Um, I was just wondering, uh, we need to remember that the special Olympics stuff that we we're also involved in. Yep. To include yeah. in there. So. Yeah, I did not do that, but that's a great point. Okay. Thank you. Under forms, I included facilities usage form, participation waiver for the communicable diseases. As you know, we started out with COVID-19. I kept it on her until the board decides to take that off. And then I put on there the pay to play participate form that parents want to access. As I explained earlier, sideline store is just a link to our, uh, our new BSN on store. Tickets we have right now our fee set and we have senior citizens gold cart club memberships. So that's on there for people to access as well as I said earlier, the school store. So um, under the forms, you should put the, uh, the physical form for yes. parents to download. Yes, we absolutely could do that. Absolutely. Yep, I could do that too. The one thing that I told you about that you were okay with, it's a pain a little bit, is remember, we would have to pay $750 more to get rid of the ads. So there's the ad. It's not crazy. It's just a small little ad underneath the scrolling pictures. And what you can see from this main page is the news articles I talk, told you about, you can simply click on it, like we said, but they rotate through. So parents can go through and pick what they want. I just put some dummy, not dummy stories, I put some older content just in order to populate it. But you'll see it's a lot like our current site, very bold, very big pictures, but they can ac access it quite quick. Um, if you use Google Docs, you can use this to update the website. I got pretty good at it now. It should be pretty quick and pretty, um, pretty user friendly, but it is kind of bold. What we're going to have to continue to work on is Mr. Pushkar's kids go and take pictures at the events, and we're going to have to incorporate them in it because it's really nice when you use the nice hot HD cameras. Like I struggle with rugby. Like I had a good picture of them in championship, but it's off someone's phone. Yeah. So it was pixelated and it was hard to see. So we're struggling trying to find good ones, but you can see how oh, this is really coming together nice on the main landing page. And there's some more features that I want to show you real quick um, as we go through this. Mr. Harley asked um, about the need for events and want to be able to access them rather quickly. So here on this tab, you can load more I know it's hard to see from your from your app, but it's pretty quick. Right on the main page, you can access all the different events scheduled. I entered all the football events, and uh, Scott Shirley's going through and ending the rest. What's nice on here, not only you can put the results by this tab, but we can also personalize this if we have a promo, if it's senior night, or something of that sort. You can really just broadcast it on there and really embed it. Once I got used to it, it was it's a lot more intuitive, uh, but it's much classier than what we had before. 
and I, I really, really like it. So you can load more and you can join an RSS feed. So it goes to your email and you can follow along. So I know that was one thing Mr. Harley asked for that we accounted for and we included. And then would there be any uh, like links for any radio coverage or anything yep. like that? Here's the next one. So then we have another another section. So right here is where I created game night. I'll hyperlink all the live feeds right there. So people don't have to fish for it. They go right there. Now you can see they're going a little bit fast through. I can change the pacing, but this is like another promo ad. So I just did one for the school store. I did one to Dr. Schaefer's point about when there's live streaming, you go right there and you don't have to really look far for it. I created that graphic and all you have to do is change the hyperlink. And then what we thought we'd do is try to do some either player spotlights or team spotlights and include that in there as well. I'm just trying to create some um, branding and some involvement in the program. Yes, Ms. What do you mean change the hyperlink on there? Because so, it'll be a different link for every event? Yes. So that goes to my question that's been percolating. How often are you going to update this thing? It's going yeah. to have to be daily. If yeah, it, if it's, it, it's, it's a big to do. It, it is. It will be somebody's duty to instantly. Yep. Okay, because I mean, I know things change, things yep. get canceled, and yep. you know, but if people get used to this, oh, I can just go here to find the game, and they go there and it's not there, that's going to be an issue. And if not, we should just end it because why did I do all this work if we're not going to update it? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. this was, I mean, it was a pain, like it's, you gave me like 20 days to get a whole website up and running, mm -hmm. and it's good, but you're right, we have to update it, we have to stay on top of it. Um, I mean, I'm just these are just some of the ideas I have, any other things we want to do, like we could do one for senior night, etc., etc. We just, I'm trying to get the site populated, but. The one thing I hated is finding, like to Dr. Schaefer's point, finding where the live streaming was. Right. It was cumbersome or it was very small. So this one really will pop. The nice thing, though, is all you have to do is change the hyperlink. So once Renda sends us the YouTube channel, which will be posted, I just change that link, and now that's active. So it's it's that the one's rather small. Where I think the coaches, the AD, and, and the kids are going to have to work together is on after an event, get a summary pretty quick. So we can, I don't want this to lag and people wait three days yeah. for a summary. Yeah. Um, that's where they're going to have to figure out that system, what that looks like. But it, it's built for it. Is it difficult to do the summary? At first because it was for me, but then I got better at it. Only because I wasn't used to the tool. Um, yeah. If you could use a, word, use a Word editor, like a, uh, Google Docs or Word, you're fine. That wasn't hard. What was difficult was their, um, their platform, right? With Ed Leo, it's much more intuitive and easier for us to navigate. This one, for example, to do the opponent list up here, before I could do the opponents, I just simply put the game in. I had to put all the high school's names in. I had to put all their addresses in. Then I had to upload all their uh, logos. Then, after I did all that, it was easy then just to put the events in. You have to do all that background work first, which was a pain. But now it's built, and as long as we don't change too many different opponents, now it's just adding the events as we go. That was a pain up front for me, but we got it done. We got it, we got it as ready. As far again. as adding results, are there... Are there um, organizations or groups or anything that after a game, I know the radio station knows results, but do we call and give results to people? Yes, ma'am. So happened? when we do that, we can just automatically do that at the same time? That's exactly right. Right now, they're required to email the AD the results. What we're probably asking for is a little bit more meat and potatoes, other than we lost 10 to 7. Maybe who did what in the game, something a little bit more to give to them. And I think they do that in some areas. But I think we have to expand upon that a little bit, and that's all we do is copy. What Eric's kids did so well last year, Dr. Ms. Broke, was they took a bunch of stock photos that I can just use over and over and over. Now, we want to populate it more, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a photo from that event. So we have a lot, we have about a, close to 30 or 40 stock photos that we can pull from now to get us started as well. You know? Good. And, and the kids are involved, um, which I like. The one thing I'd like to figure out is how do we get the um, – school newspaper involved can they write some articles on maybe new coaches um things along like they really i don't want them doing uh game results and games recap because that's if you kind of instantaneously but maybe they could do something about you know new coaches or a different program something to help get player. them involved as well yeah player of the week. yeah yeah the mvp now speaking of player of the week uh, there is a media wall you can see here that we can post everything on and our social media will be connected to that but underneath media wall there will be a big red bar going across the screen and with two spots for players of the week. I just don't have that now, so I took it down, and I thought that should be generated by the coaches. I thought about putting the two gentlemen for rugby because one's going to IUP and I think one's going to Slippery Rock, but 
I thought just wait until the fall and then whoever the coaches yeah. want to nominate, we can do that. We kind of do that with school wide pause behavior students of the month. We just have to talk and say, do we want to do athlete of the week, athlete of the month? How do we want to do that to recognize and celebrate them? But that's the thing that's missing that I just didn't have time to build yet because I don't know who to put in there. Right. And I was going to put dummy data, but then if it's dummy data, I, I just, I thought just take it off. No one's yeah. going to know yeah. any different. And then the last thing I have, I thought was crucial for me, for us was links to all the conferences or, or agencies we're a part of. So if you click on the WIPL link, it goes right to WIPL, right to PAWA, right to PIHL, mm -hmm. and right, right to rugby. So I think I tackled all the things that the board asked us for as far as um, big, bold, updated site, nice colors, branding, links to our school site, and as well as links to tickets and the school store. So <clears throat> that will go live Wednesday. Um, as anything else, it's a work in progress. We will connect it to our social media. So once we post the story here, I'll see right to social media as well. You know, the big thing we're going to have to talk about with the board is how do you want to handle the outside groups, um, Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter. Right now, our policy allows us to create whatever we want, and I have authority to grant those teams that. That what you, you'll have to decide for me is do you want to include booster groups to that? Because um, we just remember, we can't control what they put on their site. So we don't have to decide it now, but it can help be a nice, quick way for parents to access information. I'll just need you guys to tell me what you want to do there. But I hope that this is what you want. I didn't see that. I couldn't see the teams, but the eSports, is that going on this side or is that going to go somewhere else? The board did not approve that yet, so I didn't put it anywhere. I'm waiting okay. until the board makes a decision, and then we can figure that out once we get to it. Um, as you know, real quick, before I get to eSports, any other questions with the athletic website? No. I will have up by the end of next week a framework for the arts website. Um, so maybe if you don't want it there and the board decides to do eSports, I can always put it on that arts website because I am including student clubs like we just we talked about. I don't have a home yet for it, only okay. because we exactly. haven't made a decision as a board. Yeah. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. The arts website, it's going to be a little bit more involved. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm um, playing around with video, doing some stock video instead of still pictures. Hey, my vice president. There are going to be some still, there are going to be some videos that celebrates the arts. I'll try to get that to you by the end of next week, but I think I can have a framework done. Full disclosure, that site's going to be very, really, really bare until things pick up. Because even when things pick up, it's going to be somewhat static because there's not that many events. But it should be up by, uh, I think, give me a first or second week in July and we'll be good to go. So we're on target with those two websites. Any any questions regarding that? Ms. Blank, are you okay if I move on? Yeah, I'm all right. I was moving on. I think that looks like an awesome job and wonderful uh, website. I'm very happy. Okay. Randy, would you mind pulling up the agenda again? Next thing on the list, uh, I'd like the board's permission to, um, we talked about this earlier, but now it's coming to fruition. I'd like the board's permission to go ahead and communicate with our families. Um, you've charged me with responsibility to see what we could do to work with outside agencies for a community event regarding mental health. That is tentatively scheduled for August 10th, 2022, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the high school. It's going to be led by a community guidance center, Open Door Crisis, and the Armstrong, Clarion, Indiana Drug and Alcohol Commission. On there, I have a sample of a draft letter I'd like to send to families, as well as a draft promo. And then I included the op-ed that I wrote about the need for mental health services in there. So this is something the board asked us to bring some attention to. If you recall, we got an email from someone saying we could, I could do better, do more. So I did that. I tried to make sure that we responded as well as best we could. And those things are out there and ready to go. I also included in the letter you'll see, we have the district attorney's office, borough police, as well as some local pastors who want to come to the meeting as well to offer any support who may, from people who may want to talk to them. And then also families have the, cho the choice or option to go for 90 minute free training on QPR, mm -hmm. uh, question pers persuasion response in regards to suicide prevention. So we try to do a robust um, communication. Uh, you're going to laugh when I'm struggling with this. I don't know what the title letter or title the event, because if I say it's a parent training, no one really wants to go to something that implies that you're bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or you need more help. So we have to work on our communication because I don't want any parent to think that they're hurt or they're not doing a good enough job. I really want this to be something where if you want to learn more about the signs, here's a place to do that. But I want to assure people that, that no one's going to judge them, right? Just because you come to an event doesn't mean your kid's struggling. It may be just you want to learn more, right? So we want to sort that out. I don't know how we're going to do that because I think that's my fear. That's my stumbling block that people may say, look, I'm good. I don't want to come to that. Uh, but I don't know. We don't know until we try. And, and so with your permission, 
I would like to get communicating this out and get this out there. I am going to ask people to register in advance only so I know uh, how we want to do our schedule. Like for, if there's only 10 people, I'm going to let everyone just present one after another. If there's 110, I may do three small groups, if that makes sense. So I'd like to get that out if the board's okay with that as well. Are we having something for the faculty or are we going to encourage the faculty and the staff to go to this? Yeah, or? we're going to do both. We're, we're, we're going to do both. We're going to continue the work that we have been doing with the um, staff during the beginning of the year. But this is also another opportunity because like not only their staff, many of our parents. Um, the one thing I'm also kicking around, I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't want to get away from these three agencies, but uh, attorney general's office will come in and do something unsafe to say. And if you notice a lot of the attacks that happened, someone did, or there is some leakage, right? And we want to remind kids about the need to report things. And we just dealt with that in our own district a couple of weeks ago. How do we remind people about if you see something, say something? So I'm debating that around, but I don't want it to balloon to too much where people get away from it. So it's something we're looking at. Um, FBI, we also met with the FBI. They're willing to train staff on some of this as well. So we're going to develop that partnership. What I'm kicking around is do I invite them to this event as well? So we're still a little bit in flux, um, but we're going to build in flight. But it, it should be a nice night. I said yeah. invite to all the boards so they're, they, in case you can make it. It's at least on your agenda. Or the your letter that you have linked in the agenda, is that the letter that you emailed to us? It's the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yep, right. yep, yep, yep. The yeah. problem is a simple, crude um, art oh, I piece I made. It nice. Yeah, it's to the point. It's, it's nothing nice. robust. Good yeah. Picture. yeah. So, but I'd like to be able to start promoting that if everyone's okay with that. All right. Uh, last thing I have um, is, is Borough Council President. As you know, there were some comments from Dr. Peter um, Broad in the Indiana Gazette a couple weeks ago. He sent me a very nice email, which I forwarded to the board. Subsequently, after that, I had coffee with him. I wrote an op-ed and I shared it with him. It has his blessings to clear the air. When I met with Dr. Uh, Broad, I explained to him, and this is my position, I apologize if I speak out of line for the board, but uh, the comments were started in the public and I think they need to end in the public. And I think the op-ed that I wrote does that. If you're okay with it, I would like to issue it to the Indiana Gazette. So we put some closure to this comment. We enlisted his support and help and whatever they want to do to help in this work. We're, we're excited to work with them. But I think since it started publicly, it needs to end publicly. And if the board says, no, we don't want to do it, then I don't do that. But I'm just giving you my opinion. I think it needs to end publicly. And I was very appreciative of his kind words for the work we've done and what we're doing. But I do think this needs to be um, rectified in the community, if you're okay with it. Good. Okay. Uh, Ms. Blank, that's all I have. Um, I know special interest groups and subcommittee discussions are your items. Do you feel up to talking about that? Because we have about six minutes yes. left. Okay. Um, first, um, I wanted to say a shout out to Tracy Sexton for a wonderful job with a senior graduation. And God, she should never, she'd be an awesome wedding coordinator. I mean, dang, she'd be a great job. Um, she corralled all those kids and had them in the palm of her hand the entire time. Um, so I want to give a great big thank you to her for that. Um, I also had a couple of ideas, real quick ones. Um, I'd like to get for the fall some signs to go in front of the junior and senior high. Uh, a sign that says in front of the junior high, uh, BattleBots uh, origin here, or we started BattleBots. <laughs> Um, and then for the senior high, a uh, idea of um, a sign saying uh, PA State Rugby Champions 2022. So that yeah. way, those are some really big accomplishments for those two schools. And I'd like to have them, you know, right where people could see it and appreciate it and ask questions. No, I think that's a good point. Um, I didn't think of the rugby thing, but or the uh, battle boss thing, but I did meet with the rugby coach, um, Zubin and Todd. I took them on tour of the uh, high school gym. I love to see the banners we have now. And we talked and agreed that we can get them their own banner, but we'd like it to be um, in style and layout similar to what we have now. So there's some consistency. So we did that. We're working on that, Miss um, Miss Tammy. And then Eric Pushkar made a picture of the, the team and put some little graphics together in the trophy case so if you want additional stuff we could do that but rest assured we will have a state championship banner in the gym as well as a team photo in that trophy case right outside if you're, if you're okay with that i am i was just thinking that if we had it along the road where people sure. are driving by constantly it would be a really good pr thing okay um so that was my thought for that okay um 
And I also wanted to ask you, were you able to get the graduation uploaded yet? Uh, Randy has that tape. I forgot to tell Randy to do that. I'll make sure he, I'll ask him to do it tomorrow. Um, he had some family things to take care of over the weekend. So we'll, we'll make sure it's uploaded tomorrow. I do have, I know he did transfer it from the, your hard drive to his computer and um, it, we'll be able to do that by either tonight or tomorrow. All right. That's great. Okay. Um, now, all right, back to the other, the, to, to the other things that I had listed, the, the interest groups. Now, I know we are now doing flex time in the morning in the junior high to uh, help the teachers reconnect with the students more. Would yes. that mean that the possibility of an interest group experiment uh, is no longer viable? I don't know. Um, I haven't talked to the junior high about it. I can talk to them and get back to you. I mean, flex group is similar to a special interest group where they get to pick where they want to go. Some may need help or enrichment or support. Some may go to music or battle bots. So I don't know. Let me, um, if you're okay with it, let me talk to the administration there and see how that can fit in. And maybe we can present at the next academic and extracurricular committee. Okay. That would be great because uh, I think that if we got somebody from the community to speak about law, about being a lawyer or to help the kids research like a, a, an old case, um, it might be uh, help them decide what they want to study more in the junior high. It might inc uh, increase interest in the law and justice portion of the civics curriculum in the senior year. Um, or it just might be get somebody interested in digital media more or whatever. No, I, I think, yeah, now that I know where you're going, one thing I did do was I asked the, the Chamber of Commerce to start, I never said I was clever, to start careers in the classroom where they do something of that sort. They bring in some guest speakers into our schools because, as you know, we're required under 339 to do career readiness planning. So we are going to call it careers in the classroom. And I don't know the schedule yet. We have a lot of work to do to get people to sign up, but that is something we were thinking about doing. So maybe I can merge the two somehow if that's what you want i can make it work that yeah. way yeah make it instead of just like speaking or giving a lecture have them do hands-on yep. um that i think engages kids more in this day and age than a lecture would um hello adhd crowd um <laughs> so hey i'm one of them i gotta acknowledge it uh right. so um that was that's just that was my concern with that um now, we'd also mentioned doing uh, inter-school contests at one point. Um, yeah. yeah. What, what do you that, say? Yeah. Is that one of those DOAs, or uh, can we do like a rubric, uh, Goldman, you know, Rube Gold, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I think, I, I just think we haven't had time to process it. I don't think anything's dead. Like, for example, one thing we could do, like we do with Turkey Thon, maybe we get together with IUP and maybe we see which classroom can raise the most funds for a United Way campaign, and then the winning class gets a pizza party or recognize at a football game. I mean, we could do different things. It's just with the way the last couple of months I have not given it enough attention, um, and I have to get back on that and figure it out. Oh, no, 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 I'm not trying to mean pressure. I mean, I I realize that other ideas and better ideas come forward. Yeah. And so I'm willing to set aside stuff that's not going to work or isn't timely. So I'm just throwing out ideas and seeing what sticks. Yeah, I think Mr. Banning has an idea too. Or yeah, I, well, I don't. I don't know if this satisfies um, what you're thinking, but I know uh, for CKLA um, at the end of a domain, there's an opportunity. Um, there's like two, one or two days built in where um, grade level teams will sometimes really expand upon something that kids have been learning about. For instance, uh, second grade was doing, uh, learning about uh, Westward expansion. And so they had pioneer days and they did things like they made butter and they played pioneer games. Um, my third grade team for two years now has, um, for the age of the Vikings unit, <laughs> um, they dress up as Vikings, they have a Viking parade, they eat Viking food, they, play Viking games. So they are doing a lot of maybe those things to just kind of extend and expand the thinking. Is that, is, is would that? I'm, I'm, 
I'm looking for what I was looking for was some kind of contest between schools, like Mike had said, but maybe a contest, but oh. something that could involve the parents that could come in and see the what's going on. Um, how about the, who builds the best bike, fake Viking ship <laughs> in, when you're doing that study and, and have the parents come in and, and vote? Um, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe like STEM night. Is that what you're saying? Right. We do, I mean, we do STEM night um, for uh, East Pike and Eisenhower. I'm sorry. <laughs> for Ben Franklin and Eisenhower, I can at least speak for us. Um, our PTA and our teachers work together and they put on a STEM night. And families are invited in to do all kinds of STEM activities and exper uh, experiments. So I think that that's happening too. Maybe we just aren't doing a good enough job of um, talking about it. No, no, I think you are. I'm just trying to think of things that like bragging rights for the kids between schools or, oh. you know, um, something the kids can work on at home and then bring a portion of it into the school to, uh, uh, to a Rube Goldberg machine, um, you know, a piping system to, yeah. It, it, it's, who can build the longest Rube Goldberg machine, um, non-electric activated? Um, I, think, I think sometimes like the tough part is is how do we make sure that everybody can participate? Because if it's something that's done at home, sometimes parents just don't have the time or the means. So I think that if anything that we can try to do in school and then invite families in, is probably a good way to think about that, if that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I was just thinking of simple things around the house that can be recycled, like toilet paper rolls or uh, paper towel using 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 uh, making paper mache out of paper towels, stuff that every home would have. But uh, yeah, that was just something I wanted to bring up for thought. Sure. Yeah. Let us let us think it more about it out. We just. It's my fault, it's like we just haven't given it as much attention, but we can get back on it. Oh, you mean you're not doing enough? <laughs> they actually build that website. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, you're putting all that data entry in, and God, I feel bad for you because that job is not easy to do. Yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, that's, that's all I have, really. Um, and the subcommittees, I think we should discuss next meeting. Um, okay. And I think we could get more traction on that later after we get everything else a little bit more settled. Okay. Well, that's all I have, Ms. Blank. Are you okay if we end the meeting at this time so we can start building the grounds? Oh, I think he would be very happy that it's only five minutes late. Yeah, I don't want to speak for uh, Mr. Kerr, but I, I thought Dr. Schaefer and I heard, him and I heard uh, Mr. Kerr say we, we try and get down around 6.30. <laughs> so I, I'd like to get started then if that's okay. Well, you know, now that he said that, I've got about another hour's worth of things I have to mention. All right, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye.